Join me and Shut Them Down Radio this Saturday at 6 p.m. where I'll be performing some new poetry and talking about what poetry means to me. And you can ask some questions too. So I hope to see you there. Great. Good. Yeah, I just did some yoga. Good. So in case people don't know who just called in, this is Vicky Anna, poem immaculate. She is a spoken word, poet, playwright, storyteller, kind of a lot of things under the sun that involve the uh, creative arts. Um, you want to give us a little bit more about your background and everything and how you got started in poetry? Yes. Um, well, I originally started writing because I didn't feel like I had a voice. And poetry really helped for me to find my voice and for me to make a statement to the world that I exist. And a lot of my poetry talks about um, Black women and how the world doesn't necessarily see them as full and they see them more as like invincible or um, the woman who upholds the Black race. So there's a lot of uh, responsibility that's placed on the Black woman. And I am a Black woman, but uh, you mm -hmm. wouldn't necessarily be able to tell that by looking at me. So in my poems, I'm able to be vulnerable and show the side that I usually hide from the world. I'm able to be myself authentically. Yeah, so that's your voice. I get that. So what's, you mm -hmm. mentioned that um, your background is super diverse. So I know, you know, someone might say she's Black, she's uh, Latina. She, give us what that mixture of nationalities are and then you know how has that influenced your writing well i am dominican puerto rican and dutch and wow. growing up okay. in a dominican american household hablo también it's um like i'm mixed in with the american side so i'm not completely dominican but i'm not also completely american you know i'm mixed out i'm mixed so mm -hmm. in my book i talk about how I deal with that side of myself that's mixed. And although I'm not completely black, I am still part of the black community. And uh, it's, it's like being a gatekeeper to both worlds. I get to see mm -hmm. and experience things within the black community, but also I get to be outside of the black community and experience it as if I weren't a black person. So although I, it's a double-edged sword and it's a privilege, but also it can be seen as a curse if, depending on your perspective. Got to understand that. So what, have you, um, you do any live poetry readings? Is that something that you're doing now or something you want to do in the future? Yes, um, I am a spoken word poet, so I perform live with the virus and everything going on. I've been just doing uh, virtual reading so like instagram live mm -hmm. and to the new york and poets cafe which i do have some poetry to read for you guys tonight okay yeah you know the only reason i ask that is because sometimes poets they are um you know they're good at what they do they're awesome writers mm -hmm. very creative very articulate but they don't do it live so <laughs> i like to see oh, really? you know a poet at a That's coffee true. shop or a it's the truth. They just, they're great, but they just, you know, either they, they're, you know, they're, they don't want to be seen. They don't want people to, yeah. to relate their face to their poetry or they're just not comfortable. Everybody's not a comfortable public speaker, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, I like to see that artists are out there actually doing what they love to do and, you know, sharing with the world because that's really what it is. Inspiring other people, yeah, teaching absolutely. other people, sharing the history, the you know, you so. Can find me most of the time you can find me at an open mic. You kind of have to like pull me away from the mic, me and the mic that like are uh -oh. <laughs> That's good. That shows passion yeah. and I, I can really appreciate that. Uh, so yeah, so you do have some poems to recite uh, live. So let's, let's get into the first poem. Okay. I've noticed, it's, this is called Black Girls Are Not Magic for Human. I've noticed okay. the first couple black girls down tend to be black men. Regardless of how much melanin, where was my black girl magic when you made me cry because you said I was? When you called me names and pulled on my braids, as if books aren't a form of currency for women, turn that around. Riddle me this. What's beautiful and easily broken? Black girls, why? Because we're human. We're not strong. When will you realize black girls are not magic, they're delicate and perfectly perfect? 
stop throwing rocks at our glass houses. We can't build if you keep knocking us down and calling it magic. What is magic? Magical is it that this black girl looks like her ancestors. Her smile holds more for people's history than our textbooks. Our textbooks are riddled with black lines. There is no censorship here, no erasure here. Magic is it that she no longer disappears. Black girls represent freedom. Confined by multiple systems of oppression, they learn to break free and move around it. Profound are you and is your fear of her. But in reality, what do you know? Do you know how she taught us to steal seeds whilst watering us to grow? Do you know how she pried down our backs and called us beautiful each night as she tucked us in tight? Did you know she taught us the light inside of us will forever glow? She called it magical. When she said I was magic, she didn't mean invincible, but extraordinary. When you quit your mediocrity, one day you'll finally see. We have to be two times as good to even get half the chance. Magical will it be when we stop this doleful dance. And that's called Black Girls Are Not Magic, We're Human. Awesome. Good job, Ramad. What did, what inspired you to write that? And then how much of that is a, um, I was thought, let me back up. I always wonder how much is creative writing and how much is personal experience. So what inspired you to write that? And then how much of that is from personal experience? Uh, that is a personal story of mine. So I had a best friend oh, wow. and he, he told me that my boobs were too small, but my thinking was too big. And I wow. was like, you know what? I'm going to wow. write this down and also get rid of that friend. But um, <laughs> yeah, I just noticed, <laughs> I just Good noticed you. that um, black girls are not mad. Black girls are magic. That term has been uh, mis misconstructed, you know, like it, it's, it's taken on face value to mean that black girls are bulletproof that if you shoot us we won't bleed and i don't know if you guys have seen the rolling stone cover and the times cover for the black lives or black lives matter protests there are black women on the covers of those magazines and they're like fighting for the race of black people but i believe that black men should be on the cover and fighting not black women uh, right so, let me chime <laughs> yeah, that is a good perspective. Let me chime in real quick. I do agree because being on the front line, especially, you know, you're supposed to protect your woman, you know, especially in America and across the world, I think men really need to step up. We all suppress, but what I think the problem is, is a lot of miscommunication, you know, there's a lot of, yeah, there's a lot of masculation and stuff like that when it comes to the black men, yes. you know, mm -hmm. it's a lot. There's a lot of things to conquer, but I mean, we getting it, so you know. But y'all can continue. Oh no! That, yeah, I that perspective is spot on. Yeah, that's how I, I feel about the situation. The, the black race and masculine, and I agree with you know, that black men should step up. Right. Well, we have no other choice now. You know, I mean. You know, they wage, I feel like this, they wage war on us. They've been waging war on mm -hmm. us, you know. And when you get into, you know, West Indies, you know, we diverse, but I mean, it's just the conquerors that conquered us. You got to know who you are before you were patient Absolutely. that they gave you in that label. You know, like a Spaniard and um, like, you know, Haiti and all those countries, you know. Like a lot of people don't know, well, I'm not saying us per se, but a lot of people don't know that we're indigenous to America, you know, that was Turtle Island. And everybody didn't come through this um, trans uh, slave trade. So, you know, we got to yeah. understand, you know, our roots, everything, you know, that goes past slavery, you know, so we got to mm -hmm. incorporate that and find our roots, you know. So we got all these different connotations of um, Hispanic. This is your conquerors that gave you that name or if you speak French or, you know, that's not our native tongue. But yeah, y'all could continue. Absolutely. Great interview. Yeah, so I, I know that uh, just from reading your profile on Instagram that your faith is a big part of who you are and your poetry. And you had a scripture on there, and it was Proverbs 4, 23 to 27. So <laughs> why did you choose that? <laughs> um, it's about guarding your heart and just being careful with who you let into your energy. and. If you were to read my poetry, you would essentially know all of the skeletons in my closet. You would know everything about me. And that's mm -hmm. a lot of power to give someone. 
that there's like a sense of control that I would be handing over to you as the reader to to possibly have over me. And mm-hmm. that's why I'm just so selective with who I let read my poetry. But when I go and perform it, it's like a paradox where I am literally just bearing my heart and soul out to the world and authentically showing up and saying, this is who I am. And mm-hmm. I'm allowing them to judge me. But I love yeah. it. So no complaints. Being <laughs> very transparent. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so who's your, yeah, who's your family is your, who in your family is your greatest influence? So is it grandma? Is it a, your our uncle, an aunt, sister, brother? Inspiration would probably be my mom. Um, it's funny because growing up, I thought that I looked just like her. And then one day I woke up and I looked in the mirror and I was like, wait, I'm not as black as I thought I was. <laughs> <laughs> so it was like a, a shock overnight. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's real. So what is how does she uh how does she influence you? Like what give me like one or two memories that maybe I mean it could be as recent as last week, it could be a couple of years ago, but something that stuck with you that maybe when you were not feeling creative as a writer or you hit a few bumps in the road just because life happens, what things do you remember um her saying that may have helped propel you forward? Well, my mom owns her own business, and I think what really has impacted me is seeing how she believed in herself and believed in starting a business when no one else believed in her, and how far she's come, mm-hmm. and now the success that she has accumulated, pushing on and pushing through, and and doing when no one else believed in her. So that inspires me for my work, and I I realize that although I may not have a lot of followers or fans yet. If I keep keep on and persist, eventually I'll be able to get there. Yep, indeed. Yeah, persistence is key and patience. And uh, you know, yeah. you're essentially an entrepreneur. Just you know, so she was basically an entrepreneur, or still is an entrepreneur. That mind state, mm-hmm. that you know, that spirit is uh, it's special. So let's go back. I'm going to ask you one more question, and then I want to go into your second poem that you have prepared for today mm-hmm. um so the most recent piece that i viewed on instagram was turn up the music turn up the music <laughs> up, up. Yes. this is my jam so let's go talk about it explain it uh well turn up the music is all about well in hispanic culture when we clean we turn on the reggaeton and we like dance as we clean so we make cleaning into a party and mm-hmm. I had just gotten into a point where my house, like my mental house, was just full of clutter. And I really needed time to de-stress and get rid of things from old relationships that no longer served me. And this poem essentially is like, it's paying homage to my culture and to the singers who came before me, like Selena, Don Omar, um, Celia Cruz. And Mm -hmm. I was able to get, this poem is all about like new beginnings and I was able to get rid of by writing this poem. So whenever I feel like I'm in a rut, I play this poem and I'm like, okay, time to clean, time to rearrange my room, even though it's 3 a.m. Yep. So dancing um, and cleaning, that is the thing. So we need to tell more people, maybe that's what they need to do. (laughs) Olympia. <laughs> pump it up. Pump it up. Turn it up. Turn up the tune up. The, turn up the music. This is my jam. It's good. It's good. All right, let's go. Let's get into the second poem if you are ready. Yeah, I can read um turn up the music for you guys or I can perform something new. Which one would you prefer? Uh go let's perform something new because we can send people back to the uh to the Instagram okay. to see the uh turn- Okay, so this next poem is one of the things that I have to get rid of from my old relationship that inspired her Uh music. This poem is called Keying Your Car as Collateral Damage. I still wish I keyed your car. After you broke my heart and I let my thoughts run over the incident 10,000 times, I tricked myself into believing it was my fault. 
for standing in front of your blinding headlights, but no, it's yours for hitting the gas pedal when I said stop. I don't know how many times, but you heard it as encouragement to keep your foot on the pedal. 17-year-old me cried. A 20-year-old me is angry and is looking out for her little sister. So if I ever see you in the street, may God bless the new me and give me control so that my car doesn't drive off the road and hurt the boy who once hurt the girl I was, for she is still bleeding to this day. What's the best next thing to key in your car? Running over your heart with forgiveness. You were behind the wheel. I need to talk to the person down at the DMV. You should have never gotten a license to love because you had road rage, except I was in the passenger seat. Collateral damage when you wrecked your 2009 white Toyota Corolla on your way to the other girl's house you thought I knew nothing about. Did she also have to beg you to stop? Or was once enough? Fool me once, shame on you. Drive around my block and I swear I will. I will forgive you. And that is keying your car as collateral damage. That was excellent. Nice. I like that. <laughs> it's a, you know, yeah. it's, a, it's a little scary too. <laughs> because yeah, I feel like good uh, <laughs> someone comes for you, or, or wait a minute, let's not break your heart again. So before you date the next guy or whoever, you may want to read him this poem. <laughs> Well, let them know. Hello. <laughs> Stay in your lane. Stay in your lane because you don't have a license to love. You have too much road rage. <laughs> Word. So, you know what? You mentioned a Toyota Corolla. That Was that literal? Like, that have anything Sound like to do with the real? Yeah. No, I don't know what kind of car he drove. I only know it was small and white. I don't know anything about cars, so I have to like, do a quick Google search <laughs> and forget what car it was. So, <laughs> So it really could have been like a Nissan, but it's all good. Look, yeah, I, I love that poem. I do. Yeah, I love that poem. But, you know, so I can see that yeah, your passion behind how you write is really, truly from life experiences. It just sounds different, you know? Just, that's real talk. You know, that's the only thing I can say is hashtag real talk. So let's see. Right. You, have, um, you have sisters, brothers, siblings. Yes, I come a, from a large family. I have on my mom's side and then two more on wow. my dad's side. So it's six of us. And then where are you in that range? Are you youngest, oldest, middle, somewhere? I'm the middle child. So I got to be old enough to get away with things or young enough to get away with things, but old enough to be able to see my older siblings do things and write down experiences that they had. Now, do, are any of them doing poetry either as writers or <laughs> even live spoken word? No, I am the family storyteller. Aha. Uh -huh. Nice. So let's see. Um, what are your future plans like coming up? Oh, oh, let's go back. Have you won any awards? Have you performed in front of any famous people that, you know, had an influence over your life? And then, uh, you know, what are your future plans after today? I would say work performing at the New York and Poets Cafe has really influenced me to sharpen my craft because people in New York, whoo, you guys know how New York people are. You guys are so. That's right. Like, you bring it, you know. I was like, oh, okay, yeah. I gotta bring it when I. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yep. Um. So I'm currently working on getting published. I have the book. Um. It's called A Letter to and From My Ancestor Aleja, and that's the book that Black Girls Are Not Magic is from. And then Keying Your Car mm -hmm. and Collateral Damage is from a book titled The Patriarch, and it's about my relationship with men and my dad and just how that influenced me to become the woman I am today. Yeah, so talk about that just a little bit, about how that influenced you to become the woman today. Like, you know, the absence of a fatherly figure or, you know, maybe that's not even the case. You know, maybe it was just the way that they worked or didn't work. But how explain what that means to in regards to transforming you to the woman you are today. Well, my biological father left when I was very young, but I was raised by a stepdad who, for several years who 
mm-hmm. me was like my own dad and I was the favorite. So I got away with a lot of things. <laughs> uh, and affiliation of me forgiving my biological father, but also um, commenting on the relationship that my stepdad and my mom had together and the love that they had. And it was a beautiful thing to see that they were married for such a long time and they really loved each other and was had enough left over to love us. And this book also talks about the guys I've dated and how like they would call me daddy or they wouldn't call me daddy, but I would call them daddy. <laughs> but they had no problem with abandoning me like my father. And there's a, a poem titled that. So it goes into some heavy stuff, but also helps me to realize that what I was looking for can't be found in a man because I I already have everything that I need and I'm not mm-hmm. empty. I'm not broken. I'm not half of a whole. I am already part of a full whole and I don't need really anyone else. But once I love myself enough and my cup is flowing over, I am able to add into my life because I am a woman. Hmm? Hello. Yep. Yeah, you're online. You're online. Okay. Yeah. So I am a woman completely by myself and um, adding someone to complement that is the goal rather than. Um, adding someone to fulfill me. Mm-hmm. Got it. So, when do the uh, when will the book be released, and how can people get a hold of those? Uh, it'll be later this year, and you can find out more information through my Instagram at poet immaculate. Okay. And then I know you had one more poem. And I think that was, you were going to do the turn up the music. Is that the one that would have been your third? Yes, I can do that. I have a couple. Yeah, let's Yeah, let's go ahead and do that. One. Or anyone you choose, but definitely. Okay. The demons are gone. I sent them away. And when they knock on the door, I will not answer. I am too busy cleaning with my reggaeton blasting. I am preparing for a new season. I don't that it. My house could use a fresh coat of paint. If you're going to wash yourself outside and hate demons, make yourself useful and make something beautiful. Help me clear up these cajitas so I can make room for what's to come. It's greater than where I've been. Turn up the music. My blessings are abundant. My demons redundant. But alas, I will not let the sun go down on my anger. Like my mom's fuming, coño, levántate y limpia algo. I will get angry that I slept on my dream. The anger is my fuel to forgive myself each morning and recommit each night. I will be my own Latin mother. Over the sound of Selena, the angels asked me if I knew I was and still am loved. They remind me it's okay to be angry at its absence. For those boxes of emptiness the demons are taking are filled with records of lies and self-hatred. Records that I played on repeat I don't know how many times. It's a good thing today is a new day. It is a good day to not chase, but rather attract. I am back on track. Turn the music up, up, up. This is my jam. Trump, Trump, Trump. Ese negrita si tiene tumbao. And then it goes into the Celia Cruz music. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's good. It's real good. So I uh, appreciate everything that you are. Let's just start with that. I think you're like, super talented and gifted. And uh, I think your poetry will take you far into the future. And you, you so, sound so passionate about it. And you know, we can tell listening to your voice. And then also the things that we've seen online, you know, I've kind of scrolled through some of your Instagram and read some of the, uh, the little excerpts of poems and stuff like that. So I appreciate that. So what I want to do is, first of all, let you know that you're always welcome to come on this show. Um, and if you don't mind, just go ahead and give everybody a, a shout. Let them know that you run Shut Them Down Radio, who you are, and how to find you. Well, I want to say thank you so much for letting me on your show. And you got your viewers can find me at Poet Immaculate or Vickiana on Instagram. They're all linked to the same account. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Uh, we will definitely reach out to you again to have a kind of a follow up. And uh, any other questions you have for me this evening? Uh, can you guys turn up the music? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> can we turn That's up the music? Interview. Oh yes, indeed. Beautiful.
All right, thank you so much. And we'll, we'll talk to you soon. That's right. Okay, Thanks thank for you. calling Bye. in. We appreciate you. All right, take care. Yeah, Rick. That was a great interview, bro. Really oh, great you, interview. I really liked it, you know. Yeah, I appreciate it. Words are yeah, yeah, man. words are very powerful. Like people don't understand, you know, it's more powerful than a sword. Because whatever you talk in existence, usually nine times out of ten, it comes out true. Black girls are not magic. We're human. I've noticed the first to put black girls down tend to be black men. Regardless of how much melanin, where was my black girl magic when you made me cry because you said I was <sighs> when you called me names and pulled on my braids as if looks aren't a form of currency for women? Where was my black girl magic when you said my boobs were too small but my thinking was too big that I should turn that around? Riddle me this. What's beautiful and easily broken? Black girls. Why? Because we're human. We're not strong. When will you realize black girls are not magic, they're delicate and perfectly perfect. Stop throwing rocks at our glass houses. We can't build if you keep knocking.